guys and welcome to the Fallen Protectors Arcane Mage Guide. In this guide I'm going to be covering everything you need to know to play Arcane to the top level on this fight. Let's get right into it. We're going to cover talents, glyphs, and then some tips and tricks for you. Let's get right into talents. The first thing that we need to know about our talent system is what are our choices that we actually care about. Are we going to be going with Temporal Shield or Ice Barrier on this fight? Uh, actually, for this fight, you definitely want Temporal Shield. There's really not a whole lot of damage coming out except for maybe in the Dome phase. So keep in mind that that's a good time to pop Temporal Shield. If, um, you know, if you have Mark of Anguish, again, you shouldn't really be popping that. You should be popping some other things. But Temporal Shield, again, really helpful there. If you accidentally do stand in something like Corrupted Brew or anything else, having Temporal Shield up and that big heal back over time is going to really help you. Uh, if you get sucked in by Rook's Spinning Crane Kick, again, popping that Temporal Shield while you're getting out will only help you. I tend to pick that. Ice Barrier can be useful, but Temporal Shield seems to be sufficient to get you through this fight as long as you're staying out of the stuff that you need to stay out of. Uh, going down the list, Greater Invis, super important on this fight. Why is Greater Invis so important? Because it allows us to pretty much negate Mark of Anguish. We can do the same thing with Ice Block, so having Cold Snap is also very good. We don't want Cauterize, though, okay? Either pick Greater Invis or Cold Snap, depending on how long your Mark of Anguish phases are lasting, whether you're doing Normal or Heroic. Really depends on which one you want to use here, but having that Greater Invis be able to just negate all that damage is monstrous, so keep that in mind. Um, and again, you can do that with Ice Block, or you can do that with Greater Invis. It is really up to you. Uh, I've seen it done both ways. And remember that if you have Greater Invis, it's up every two minutes. So you can Ice Block the second one. And then if you do it for some odd reason, you know, if you're just running out of time, you can then Greater Invis after that if need be and pretty much negate the entire thing. So it's really up to you how you want to handle that. But I recommend Greater Invis on this fight just for Mark of Anguish mainly and just as a safety net talent as well because you always have Ice Block regardless. Um, as far as bomb goes, we want Nether Tempest. Nether Tempest is overpowered on this fight. We will do an absurd amount of damage on this fight as Arcane if we're spreading out Nether Tempest to all possible targets. It hits like an absolute dump truck, so keep that in mind. Especially if we're at four stacks, applying that Nether Tempest is huge. It also grants us the possibility to get Missile Procs, which again, monstrous for this fight and keeping that man up there so nether tempest is our friend on this fight we have no desire to have living bomb or frost bomb on, the, on this fight at all so do not do it as always we're using root of power as arcane that goes without saying same thing with your level one talents we want ice flows and our cc talents we don't care because we're not pvp so having that out of the way let's go into glyphs glyphs there's a lot of options on this fight I always take double blink, mainly just to make sure I can get out of problems and get back to my spot in a hurry. Uh, if I have Inferno Strike on me, I can get up, I can get into the melee or wherever our stack point is for that. Um, if Rook does a spinning crank kick, I can blink out of it immediately back into my rune. Uh, if there's something I need to quick move across the room for, I am always can be in a good position very quickly with double blink. That's why I take it. Um, again, this is where you will run into some questions. Some people will take Cone of Cold, some people will take Arcane Explosion, some people will take Armors. Um, I actually take Armors and Evocation for this fight. And the reason I take Armors and Evocation for this fight is very simple. Um, armors is just a overall damage mitigation, which is fine. But Evocation heals you while you're in your rune, and since you're pretty much always in your rune, any damage that is coming out, at least you have kind of a self-heal going on. Again. There's not a huge DPS increase in taking one over the other. It's really personal preference at this point. So whatever you feel more comfortable with glyph-wise, just make sure you have double blink and you should be good to go. Some people will also use glyph of loose mana. Again, all up to you and your play style. You choose how you want to play it. Going into uh, tips and tricks, obviously most groups will pop uh, their heroism right off the start, burn everything down, and then just kill things. Make sure you're switching targets to the right target. Okay, as Arcane, we can put an incredible amount of single target burst on anything we want to. So when the Mark of Anguish target comes out, pummel that thing, okay? You have the ability to do more damage to that Mark of Anguish or that Embodied Anguish ad than anybody else in your raid. Hands down, period. You're an Arcane Mage. You can destroy a single target if you want to. That is what we are great at. Now, Blizzard has given us some cleave and given us some dot capability, but the reason that Arcane Mages are so strong is because you say, I need this target destroyed, Arcane Mage says, done, okay? So, 
when ant phases come out, we destroy them. When those despairs come out, we destroy them. When Mark of Anguish comes out, we destroy them. Everything, we destroy them. Keep in mind also, guys, that your Arcane Barrage can hit multiple targets. So if everybody's grouped up, get to your four stacks, burn your missile procs, Arcane Barrage those stacks off, get that nice meaty damage on all those ads. It's an automatic cleave, so you don't have to worry about it. Make sure that you're keeping your dots up at all times, that you're pummeling the targets you're supposed to be pummeling, and then spreading your dots around, AOEing as much as possible with things like Arcane Barrage. But again, this is a single target based fight with multiple targets. So what we're doing is obviously is we're kept trying to keep our dots and everything, keep as much damage rolling as possible. But when it's time to tunnel into a specific target, tunnel into that target and tunnel harder than anybody else because you will do an insane amount of damage if you do that. Of course, after that, it's rinse and repeat. So go ahead and watch the rest of this kill video. I'm curious to see how you guys enjoy it. Arcane is awesome on this fight. Thank you for watching. As always, see you in the next one.